Knowledge is not for knowing. Knowledge is for cutting. People know what they do. Frequently they know why they do what they do. But what they don't know is what what they do does. I don't feel that it is necessary to know exactly what I am. The main interest in life and work is to become someone else that you were not in the beginning. Where there is power, there is resistance. I don't write a book so that it will be the final word. I write a book so that other books are possible, not necessarily written by me. Maybe the target nowadays is not to discover what we are but to refuse what we are. The strategic adversary is fascism, the fascism in us all, in our heads, and in our everyday behavior, the fascism that causes us to love power, to desire the very thing that dominates and exploits us. Do not ask who I am and do not ask me to remain the same. More than one person, doubtless like me, writes in order to have no face. But the guilty person is only one of the targets of punishment. For punishment is directed above all at others, at all the potentially guilty. The intellectual was rejected and persecuted at the precise moment when the facts became incontrovertible, when it was forbidden to say that the emperor had no clothes. The fear before the absolute limit of death becomes interiorized in a continual process of ionization. There is no power relation without the correlative constitution of a field of knowledge, nor any knowledge that does not presuppose and constitute at the same time power relations. I'm not making a problem out of a personal question. I make of a personal question an absence of a problem. Death left its old tragic heaven and became the lyrical core of man his invisible truth, his visible secret. Justice must always question itself, just as society can exist only by means of the work it does on itself and on its institutions. Do not think that one has to be sad in order to be militant, even though the thing one is fighting is abominable. We have to be there at the birth of ideas, the bursting outward of their force. Not in books expressing them, but in events manifesting this force, in struggles carried on around ideas, for or against them. You may have killed God beneath the weight of all that you have said, but don't imagine that, with all that you are saying, you will make a man that will live longer than he. from the idea that the self is not given to us, I think there is only one practical consequence. We have to create ourselves as a work of art. There is not one but many silences, and they are an integral part of the strategies that underlie and permeate discourses. There is no glory in punishing. The soul is the effect and instrument of a political anatomy. The soul is the prison of the body. The language of psychiatry is a monologue of reason about madness. Madness is the absolute break with the work of art. It forms the constitutive moment of abolition, which dissolves in time the truth of the work of art. power is tolerable only on condition that it masks a substantial part of itself. Its success is proportional to an ability to hide its own mechanisms. Death as the destruction of all things no longer had meaning when life was revealed to be a fatuous sequence of empty words, the hollow jingle of a jester's cap and bells. 
nature, keeping only useless secrets, had placed within reach and in sight of human beings the things it was necessary for them to know. We must not think that, by saying yes to sex, one says no to power. It is the certainty of being punished, and not the horrifying spectacle of public punishment, that must discourage crime. Prefer what is positive and multiple, difference over uniformity, flows over unities, mobile arrangements over systems. Believe that what is productive is not sedentary but nomadic. Confined on the ship, from which there is no escape, the madman is delivered to the river with its thousand arms, the sea with its thousand roads, to that great uncertainty external to everything. Self-attachment is the first sign of madness, but it is because man is attached to himself that he accepts error as truth, lies as reality, violence, and ugliness as beauty and justice. It is meaningless to speak in the name of, or against, reason, truth, or knowledge. There is no escaping from power, that it is always already present constituting, that very thing which one attempts to counter it with. In the darkest region of the political field, the condemned man represents the symmetrical, inverted figure of the king. In any given culture, and at any given moment, there is always only one episteme, that defines the conditions of possibility of all knowledge, whether expressed in theory or silently invested in the practice. Madness is the false punishment of a false solution, but by its own virtue it brings to light the real problem, which can then be truly resolved. As the archaeology of our thought easily shows, man is an invention of recent date, and one perhaps nearing its end. We are entering the age of the infinite examination, and of compulsory objectification. Surveillance is permanent in its effects, even if it is discontinuous in its action. My point is not that everything is bad, but that everything is dangerous. Truth is linked in a circular relation with systems of power which produce and sustain it. Power is also exerted over the body, not so much as physical punishment, but as ideological orders. One must confront what one is thinking, and saying with what one is doing what one is. The individual with his identity and characteristics, is the product of a relation of power exercised over bodies, multiplicities, movements, desires, forces. The perfect disciplinary apparatus would make it possible for a single haze to see everything constantly. Absurdity destroys the, and of the enumeration by making impossible the in whether things enumerated would be divided up. We are in the society of the teacher judge, the doctor judge, the educator judge, the social worker judge. Truth and falsity, will have revealed the face it turned away from us for so long, and which is that of its violence. If you knew when you began a book, what you would say at the end, do you think, that you would have the courage to write it? Fatal necessity that reduces man to dust, we pass to a contemptuous contemplation of the nothingness, that is life itself. To work is to undertake, to think something other, than what one has thought before. What strikes me is the fact, that in our society, art has become something which is only related to objects, and not to individuals, or to life. 
To sum up all these steps, each of which is very lengthy and complex, we will have put the game of truth back in the network of constraints and domination. If you are not like everybody else, then you are abnormal, if you are abnormal, then you are sick. These three categories not being like everybody else, not being normal, and being sick are in fact very different, but have been reduced to the same thing. What is true for writing, and for a love relationship, is true also for life. The game is worthwhile insofar as we don't know what will be the end. One cannot attend to oneself, take care of oneself, without a relationship to another person. There are forms of oppression and domination which become invisible. The new normal. Search for what is good and strong, and beautiful in your society and elaborate from there. Push outward, 